Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna show you guys how to set up world partition and import tiled landscapes. That way you can set up open world maps in Unreal Engine 5. So that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so first things first, let me explain what world partition is. Uh, world partition is a grid that auto divides your map into levels. Each grid is essentially a level that is streamed in and out based on distance. However, you can control the streaming via blueprint if you want. Traditionally in Unreal Engine 4, to get this grid based loading system in an open world map, you'd have to create a tiled landscape. You'd have to create a landscape for each level and that grid size would be determined by how big those landscape tiles were and it was using the old system called world composition. All right, so to enable world partition, it's actually quite easy. So you just go to edit, project settings, search world partition, and click this little checkbox. This actually enables world partition for all of your levels in your game. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't figure out how to enable world partition just for that specific level. Since this box is grayed out, I don't know if there's something I have to select here, but once you enable world partition here, you have to restart your project. And once you've restarted, you can go to file new level. So I'm just gonna do time of day. And then you have to file save current level and you want to save your level to your project. And once you finish saving your level to your project, you want to open a different map and then reopen the map that you saved. Kind of refreshing the map, that way that way the engine sees that world partition is enabled in that map that you created. So right now, world partition is enabled, and you might not be able to see it right now, but basically to see this, we're just going to create a landscape real quick, that way I can just show you the actual grid. Uh, so to show the actual grid, first of all, you're going to wanna open up this world settings which is just window uh, world settings right here. And scroll down to the world partition setup. And then you're gonna see this world partition, hit this down arrow, runtime mesh, runtime hash, runtime mesh settings, and then grids. So in here we have index, which is an array, and we can hit this preview grids. And then you can see this is the world partition grid so you can see our map here is currently being divided into these little grid points. So each of these is going to be streamed out. Think of these kind of as like levels. So all of like the items and stuff is going to be streamed out based on distance. So to kind of showcase that, I can get some trees here and I can go paint some stuff on the landscape. And pretty much I'll just paint a couple of things here on the landscape. And then now basically, when I decrease the loading range here, like so, you can see the distance around my character that's gonna be loaded in. In fact, I'll take the player start here and move it back just a little bit. I can hit play. I hit play and you're gonna see nothing here is loaded in. So actually, I'm gonna show the grid, which I'm gonna enter this console command wp runtime dot toggle draw runtime hash 3d this is going to show me the grid so i believe if we head over here we can start seeing the trees load in so we can see all the trees are loading in here as we move further okay so these kind of popped in a little bit earlier so obviously the loading range is quite small and I can show you guys a more top-down view if I just add a cube up here and I just put my player start up here, I'll hit play and then I'll do fly and we can see our circle. This is essentially our culling distance. And so you can see the stuff loading in now it is kind of odd that uh, part of this stuff is taking a while to call in. So I'm just wondering if I need to up the streaming distance. 
Um, but yeah, this is essentially the gist of how it works. So as you can see here, it's loading and calling out the meshes based on this grid. So obviously you don't want to have these grids be this tiny. So you want it to obviously be a lot larger and you can change the cell size here to be much larger than this. And I even wouldn't recommend it being this small. And so uh, to show off what partition, we're going to create a tiled landscape. And I'll show you how to do that here in Unreal Engine 5. A lot of things have changed when it comes to tiled landscapes. To import a tiled landscape, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new level, time of day, save current level. And I have these three landscapes here. They're all the same except for this one is a three by three tiled landscape, four by four and a five by five. So I'll leave these in the description below if you guys want to follow along with this video and mess around with, with tiled landscapes. So to import a tiled landscape, so we go to the landscape tab, then we go to import from file. Now from here, you're not gonna see anywhere you can import a tiled landscape. Uh, back in Unreal Engine 4, to import a tiled landscape, you had to go to window, levels, and there was a world composition button right here, or a button to right click and import tiled landscapes. There's nothing like that here anymore. So you actually have to go to the landscape mode and click import from file. And then you just select your height maps. And I'm gonna do the three by three first. So you want to select the first tile in the sequence. And then you can see here the preview of what it's gonna look like. If I zoom out my camera. Now one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat, uh, don't hit import yet, is that the landscape is kind of messed up. And to fix that, you have to hit this flip Y axis, and then it's going to fix that and align it up. Another thing to note here is the height map resolution. So these tiles are actually, I believe, imported at 2017 by 2017 resolution. And so you have to make sure that your resolution is even like so. If it's like one odd number, like one small number and one really long number, that means that you don't have the resolution right. Okay, and then we can go ahead and hit import. All right, so here's our little map here. It's again, not super big, but I can show you guys the other landscapes here, which are four by four, and then a five by five. So this is just a three by three. And right off the bat, you'll see that it automatically divides the three by three tiles into um, smaller pieces, which are 511 by 511. I'm not entirely sure why it does this, um, but just be aware. Okay, so in our world settings here, under the world partition, we can go ahead and actually first we need to file save all, and you need to go ahead and reopen the map. So once you've reopened the map, you're going to notice here that your tiles aren't loaded in. So to get to the world partition window to load in your tiles, you go to window, world partition. And it's going to summon this little window with this grid and it shows you all the tiles of your landscape. So this is very similar to world composition where you have your map here um, and all the tiles of your landscape. There's a lot less settings here and you used to be able to add your own custom streaming sizes based on the landscapes that you selected, but essentially it's all moved here to your streaming distance. So here we can select, drag, and right click and load selected cells. So since this is a fairly small landscape, like three by three, three by three original tiles, not in really high resolution, you can pretty much get away with loading the entire thing. Now I can dock this into there. As you can see here, we're moving around our map. You can see the position of our character move around when we move around our map. Okay, and over in the world settings, we can go to world partition, runtime mesh, runtime hash, and under the grids, we can go ahead and click preview grids. So you're gonna see right off the bat, it's really small. 
Uh, we can go ahead, just for now, crank up the loading range so we can get this preview over our entire landscape. And then we're going to go ahead and crank up the cell size. So you want to crank up the cell size to uh, a pretty decent range. Um, essentially, these are going to be levels and all the assets and stuff that you load into it it will automatically stream them in and out based on this loading range. So again, you can adjust the loading range to whatever distance you want. Just note that when it comes to tile landscapes, um, you can see here the tiles aren't lining up with the actual main grid. And that's because, again, World Partition is a whole separate, is a whole separate grid system. Uh, compared to world composition where you'd have the grids lined up with each terrain and now that could be like a good thing and a bad thing the, obviously the benefit to having this grid based system is now you don't have to have landscapes at all uh, you could use just meshes and have the same benefits of having that grid based world loading system now we can like modify the grids cell size to kind of match up here so you can see if we scale it up like that, it will equal approximately four tiles of our landscape. And this is pretty fine, honestly. Um, if I hit play, you can see here the streaming distance. And she hit play and do fly. And basically, as I move further away, and it might be hard to see, uh, these landscape tiles are streamed in and out. And of course, all of the trees and rocks and all that stuff that is placed on the landscape is going to be streamed out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and import a much larger landscape here, probably this 5x5. Five five. So I'll go ahead and create a new level, time of day. And then file, save all, 16 by 16. Okay, and we'll go to landscape here. We're going to select the first tile here in this 5x5. Five five. And you're going to see here the resolution. This is when you know you've done everything right. Um, when it shows here the total resolution of your landscape. And you're going to have to increase the z-axis a little bit because you can see it's a little bit flat. We're losing a little bit of definition. So we can add like 150. And then we can go ahead and click import. Okay, and then you can see we imported our tile landscape here. You can see all the different tiles here. And this map is actually pretty big. So if I play from here, I can give you guys a sense of the scale. I'm just going to hide this. And by the way, the command here I'm using is in the documentation for World Partition. So if you guys ever need reference. Okay, and so I can go ahead and go to World Settings. And you can see right here, it's not giving us those options to show the grid. So that's telling us we need to go ahead and save this and reopen it. So we can go ahead and go to content, open up different map, and then go back to the map that we had. And we can see we have our settings there. So we go to our world partition tab because everything is deloaded. So we have to select everything and right click and click load. And again, if you had like a really large map, I wouldn't recommend loading every single landscape tile in your map because it has to load every single tile, all the stuff in that tile into memory and that could be a lot. So in our world settings here, runtime, runtime hash, go ahead and enable that preview. It's really small, so we're gonna go ahead and increase this up. First, I'm gonna increase the loading range here so we can actually get a better understanding of what it looks like. And then we can increase the cell size here to something much better and really the cell size uh, what's a good guide on how big your 
map should be divided up into sublevels is kind of up to you. In traditional UE4, it was the size of each landscape tile was assigned to a level streaming proxy, like so. Um, so this is probably good at least for demonstration's sake. And actually I might increase, decrease it just for demonstration's sake. And in the foliage tool, I'm gonna go ahead and paint some trees on the landscape. If you're doing open world maps, I don't recommend like painting and using the foliage tool here. Uh, it's best to use, there are like procedural ways you can generate a foliage on top of your map, like trees, rocks, and grass. So uh, I'm just doing this for obviously demonstration purposes. So I can go to trees here. And what you're going to notice is the fact that I can paint wherever I want and it will be automatically assigned and loaded based on this grid size, which, which we can obviously adjust however we want. So this is much more different than how it was in Unreal Engine 4, uh, where you had that set grid size that you were given and there really wasn't much that you can do about it. So I'm gonna paint a bunch of trees here if I want. And our map can be highly dense forest here, at least on the mountains, I don't know. Something like this. And then we can go ahead and decrease loading range just a bit. Maybe the cell size a bit so that we can get a better idea. Go to our player start here. And actually go ahead and drag these two things up so we get kind of a bird's eye view. Okay, and then I'm going to use the command. And I'm gonna do fly. So here we can see our grid tiles from the bird's eye view. We can see which active tiles are currently loaded. And mind you, these uh, landscape tiles here are separate from the world partition tiles. So that's why you notice that the landscape tiles aren't matched up to the world partition tiles. That's because they're kind of separate. So now you can see as we move in, the circle is going to encompass more tiles and it's going to load the trees that are in those tiles. So let me actually increase the speed of my character. Maybe need it to be like 15,000 walk speed and as I move around let me get rid of this runtime hash there's actually a runtime hash 2d which gives you a grid view and this grid size view will show you which levels here are loading in and which levels are loading out you can see the trees and all that stuff are loading in when we move closer. So yeah, that's pretty much World Partition in a nutshell. Um, and how to import yourself tiled landscapes into your levels. I know in particular the documentation is is kind of lacking. I mean, they didn't really show you how to uh, import tiled landscapes and where those settings kind of move to. So I'm not really sure um, if they're just moving away from landscapes in general or if they just haven't added those extra features that we had back in Unreal Engine 4 or if they're just consolidating all the all of the controls and stuff into one main system. Anyways, that's kind of just it for this video. Uh, just a brief overview of World Partition and what it can do. Again, if you guys want to mess around with the landscape tiles, I'll leave these in the link in the description below. Um, and yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.